Good morning, all. So good to see all of you that you remembered to change your time, so you're here on time. As well, I want to welcome those that will be witnessing or following the services later while it's on tape. Uh, we have a few announcements. Today is All Saints Observance. We have a staff meeting on Tuesday uh, at 7 p.m. Wednesday on the 10th is Operation Christmas Child Packing Party, which begins at 6 p.m. Shoebox drop-off starting November 15th through the 22nd. The drop-off times will be listed in the newsletter. Christmas poinsettia sign-up sheet is in the Welcome Center. Deadline to sign up is next Sunday, which is the 14th. Also, Sunday the 21st, there's a blood drive beginning at 8 a.m. through 1 p.m. There's an information flyer on the back in the Welcome Center, so please pick one of those up as blood is desperately needed. Our centering scripture this morning is from Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endureth the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. If it's comfortable to stand, please rise as we sing, Here I Am to Worship, led by Jess and Seth.
being seated, take this time to extend a welcoming wave. Hello, everyone. I want to say one thing this morning. God loves you. God loves you all. And we are so blessed to have a God that loves us, each and every one, and even those that haven't experienced his love. He loves them. And I just pray that they will come to know the love of their heavenly Father, our God, in their life. It's good to gather together to worship today. and I want to get right into it. It seems like there's so many prayer requests lately and all of us are going through so much in so many different ways. I want to share those names that we've been praying for. We continue to pray for Gerald Kittner and Frank Comp, Rich Sano, and for all those who are battling cancer. There's so many right now that many of us know. Lee and Cindy Stamball, Todd Eshelman, Frank Sawyer, Addison Carver, we keep praying for Addison back there. She smiled at me back there. How wonderful. We keep praying for Jack Smiley and Carl Kreiser and Fran Kittner. And Fran wanted to thank you for her prayers uh, that you've lifted up for her. Her test results were good that she got the other day. And we just celebrate that and we say thank you God, don't we? Thank you God. We want to keep praying for Kathy. Kathy Genrick is with us here this morning. We just celebrate, Kathy, your healing that's happening in your body. We just celebrate that and give thanks for that. And we want to continue praying for Vicki Lowe as she has more testing coming up. And Dave Palmer and Judy Hare, Sister Ruth, and Patty Gross. For Becky and Dave Palmer. Sherry Ziders and Bella and Connor, we want to keep them in our prayers. Uh, family of Don Schellenberger and family of Terry Burkholder. All those who have had loved ones have passed. It just seems so many right now. And uh, Sandy Grove and, and Linda and Mallory and David and Tanya Kiner, we keep that family in our prayers. They have so much going on right now. And Mary Toomey and Pastor Ken Kitzmiller, Vicki Lowe's nef nephew and... Uh, Desmond, who is 15 and in the hospital, we want to pray for Desmond. And uh, Donnie Baker, who had knee surgery and now has COVID and never got out of the hospital. And just keep him in prayer, if you would, in that family. Judy Hare has a pinched nerve in her back and she'll be getting a shot this week. She has to use a walker to get around, so keep Judy in your prayers. And uh, Judy's brother-in-law uh, has primary malignant glioma cancer. Uh, so be praying for him also. And I just received this. Be praying for the family of Dean Chestnut too. Uh, he was in a motorcycle accident and has just passed. So there's just so many right now. And how blessed we are to just quiet ourselves and go to the Lord in prayer and know that he not only hears, he listens, but he also responds to our prayers. And I just found out Stanley was in the hospital too in the last two weeks and we want to continue to pray for Stanley and Arliss too and we just all need prayer so let us bow our heads and our hearts for a word of prayer today. Father God how wonderful it is to just know that you are there and always listening and watching over us and, and God you love us so much and we thank you for that and, and God we just thank you for your faithfulness to us your children. And God, how wonderful it is to be able to gather together and have this time together to unite our hearts together with your heart, to be so united with you through our prayers and this quiet time. And to open up our hearts and say, God, here we are. We've come to worship you. But as we worship the Lord, we lift Jesus Christ up. We want the world to know there is a Savior and his name is Jesus. So thank you, Jesus, for loving us so much. And we just pray today, Jesus, somebody will open up their heart and say, Jesus, come in. I need you. And Jesus, that you will enter in and 
change their life because you can change their life. And we just pray as we gather for this time of worship in our prayers and our singing as your word is shared, God, that your Holy Spirit will come alive in each and every one of us. And may each of us be so in tune with your spirit. May your spirit fill us and help us to hear the words that we need to hear. Because God, you can take whatever is said and it can touch each and every person in a different way because of your Holy Spirit and the way the Spirit moves in our lives. So come, Holy Spirit, come. And God, there's so many upon our hearts today, so many loved ones, so many family members, so many friends. We pray for our nation. We pray for our children and, and youth that are in school once again. We just pray for so many. We pray for the division that's happening in our nation and in this world today. We want to see unity come through Jesus Christ, our Lord, because he is the one who unites us through your love and your grace and your forgiveness. Oh God, all those prayers upon our hearts, the spoken and unspoken, we wanna lift them up to you today and ask you, Lord, to move as only you can. And I wanna invite everyone here and everyone that is listening, just take a moment right now and offer up the prayer to Jesus in silence. Give him your concerns, your worries, your hurts right now. Oh God, hear all of our prayers and flow with healing, flow with forgiveness, flow with peace into each and every life. We all need you, God. And we just invite you to be near us and be with us and walk with us and show us the way. As we continue to walk through this time that's so filled with so many questions, so many doubts, so many concerns, so many worries. God, help us all to look to you. Because you know the way. Help us to be guided by our good shepherd, Jesus. May we follow him and listen for his call upon our life. And may your Holy Spirit, your spirit of truth abound in our life and open up each and every heart to your wisdom and your truth and your love and your forgiveness. And help us right where we are and all that we may be going through shine the light, the true light, the one and only light of Jesus Christ our Lord in this world so that they might see the Savior who is Jesus. And that we as a people might turn back to you and follow you and open up to your truth and your justice as we live a life of love that comes from you, the source of all love. So God, hear our prayers. We need you. We love you. Be with us during this time of worship. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and help us to seek to live a righteous life. And we ask it all in the name of our Savior and our Lord Jesus the Christ who taught us all to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Today is the observance of all saints. And we're going to do it a little different this year because I, as I looked at our church family and there's just over the past through 2020 and 2021, we've really been hit hard with the loss of loved ones. You know that? And as I thought about that and what could we do? Because we usually say the names and ring a bell, but we're going to do it a little different than that. I want to do it this way. I want to invite anyone, even if you're at home listening, if you've lost a spouse in the past 20, 21, in the past year and two years, I'm going to invite you to stand, would you? Just stand at this time. And remain standing if you would. Now I want to invite all those who have had parents or grandparents who have passed in that past time also. Would you stand at this time? I want to invite you if you've had someone in your family, a brother, a sister, a cousin, or somebody close to you in your family to stand if you would. And over the past two years, have you had somebody that was a good friend, a wonderful friend, a loved friend that has passed? Would you stand at this time? Look around. See how our families and we have been affected by loss of loved ones? That's why I wanted us to stand together. Because what keeps us together is God's love through Jesus Christ. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask Mike to come up and ring the bell seven times. And then I'm going to pray. Father God, most loving God, you have given us a great multitude of witnesses who have testified in the amazing power of your son's resurrection. And we just ask that by your presence among us that you teach us the truth of life everlasting. And through this day of remembrance of those who have gone before, who have gone before us, grant us inspiration to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Keep us on the way of truth until we too join in endless celebration with all your saints in splendor. Till we join once again with those loved ones that we remember and mourn still their loss. And in the name of Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever, we invite you to surround us. Give us that peace that only you can give as we remember and give thanks for your love and those loved ones that we miss so much. And we ask it in his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and say, thank you, God. Amen.
and amen. You may be seated. Now we want to invite Ruth and the children to come up. Well, we just heard Mr. Mike ring the bell for a special day. And does anybody remember what we were talking about, what today is? All Saints Day. We don't talk about saints very much, but saints is another word for Christians, people who live to please God and to be like God, pure and holy. Saints are God's holy people. And we believe in God, our Father, who created us, and he gives us everything we need, doesn't he? Air and water and food. And God just wants us to be good, doesn't he? But it's hard to be good all the time, isn't it? Are you good all the time? (laughs) I'll take that as a no. Well, you know what? We can't really be good all the time, all by ourselves. We need a little help. And God sent Jesus to help us. Jesus tells us to love God and love other people. But sometimes that's hard for us. Were you ever mean to anyone? No, not even this one. No, never. Were, were any of you ever mean to anyone? No, we have wonderful children here. Well, you know what? The older you get, the more chances you have to, to mess up. But Jesus tells us that if we say we're sorry, he will forgive us. Jesus even died on the cross to take the punishment for the bad things that we do. And God also sends his Holy Spirit to people who believe in Jesus to help them not do bad things and to learn how God wants us to live. So the Holy Spirit also gives us gifts. Last week, Kelly talked about using our gifts like the tools in her toolbox. She wants us to use our gifts to help other people and to help people learn about Jesus. So saints, (laughs) hey, there's a song about saints marching. We're gonna do that later down in uh, junior church. You'll be in, in good shape for that. So the saints are the people who believe in God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And people that are saints live with God in heaven forever. And the people that we were remembering today rang the bell on All Saints Day, these are the people that died this past year. And we miss them because they're not with us, but we can celebrate and be happy because we know that they live with God forever. And we're happy that they helped us learn about God and they passed on their faith to us. So can we say a prayer together? Saints, dear Lord, today we honor your saints that died these past two years. They lived faithful lives that pointed others to Jesus, and they helped us to learn about Jesus. So please help us to be like them, because we want to be your holy people too. We want to be saints like they are. Help us to always love you with our hearts, souls, minds, and strength and to love others as ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, everyone, and we can go down to Junior Church.
Can you give our children a hand this morning? Now we're going to have Seth and Jess come up and lead us in another song. So if you're able, I invite you to stand if you would. I want to jump right into looking at faith once again. I want to share from Romans, the first chapter, the 17th verse with you. It says, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Say that with me. The righteous will live by faith. A life of faith is one of constantly seeking God. 
It's always trusting God. It's living for God and following God. Faith is the active pursuit of righteousness, the righteousness of God. And as I thought about that, the, it's all about action. It's all about being active in pursuing your faith and the righteousness of God. I thought about on this All Saints Observance Sunday, you know, Hebrews 11 is known as the Hall of Fame of Faith. Let me just read a few of those that are listed there in that Hebrews 11th chapter. You recognize them, I'm sure. By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. See the action in his faith? Built an ark to save his family. It says, by faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went. See the action? He obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months. See the action? They hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. See the action? The army marched around. That's all they did. Marched around them for seven days. Faith in action. And if we go on down in Hebrews, it says, And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon and Barak, Samson and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Faith in action. I was thinking about that and what's it mean to have faith in action and to be active in our faith. And about a week and a half ago, I met with my urologist who was follow up on my prostate cancer and He's always running late because he takes time to talk with his patients. I had waited an hour and he finally came in and we went over everything and he began talking with me then. He said, Dennis, I wanted to tell you about what I was doing as we went through this pandemic over the past year and a half. He said, I decided I was going to learn my native language. And he goes, I didn't live there because my parents had moved away from that country to another country, but it's Italian. And he said, so I got on this class online and I began to learn the words and the definitions in Italian. And he says, it was very good to do that, but it just didn't come together for me. He said, I kept learning these words and what they meant and it's a little different than English in many ways because words have a different meaning from here to there. And he said, I kept learning, but then they started having conversations. We began to dialogue in the language and that's when the language began to come alive. He said, when I heard people talking and putting it in context, I began to understand, I began to grasp that language I never knew, and it began to make sense and come alive in me. We might say the same about faith. Faith comes alive when we go beyond hearing and learning to where we were actively pursuing the righteousness of God as we step forward in faith. Johnny Erickson Tata said, faith is in the ability to believe long and far into the misty future. It's simply taking God at his word and taking the next 
step. Taking the next step. The question is, the question for all of us is, are you ready? Are you ready to take the next step? To stand out for Jesus when the world wants us to fit in? To stay connected? To always stay connected to God? To be nurtured. To set aside a lot of those things in our lives that seem to nurture us and what we think and what we believe and to be nurtured by Jesus Christ our Lord. To reach out, to be reaching out to Jesus all the time. Will you follow God? Remembering that God leads when we walk and live a life of faith. Are you ready to take the next step? Are we, as a church family, ready to take the next step following God as He leads us to live a righteous life of faith? I'm going to ask you to turn in your Bibles if you have them. We're going to look at John, the second chapter. This is at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, not long after he was baptized, and he had called his disciples to go with him. It's John, the second chapter, beginning at verse 1. You're going to recognize this right away. On the third day, a wedding took place at Canaan, Galilee, and Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. And Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. It's a joyous occasion. It's a wedding. It's not what weddings are supposed to be. It's supposed to be a joyous occasion and they're happy times and representing new beginnings. But this celebration is about to have an embarrassing ending. The guests are going to be leaving. And the wedding will be the talk of the town. Everybody will be talking about it. The celebration was to last a whole week. Yeah, that's what they did back then. The celebration of a wedding lasted for a whole week at a time. And to run out of wine represented poor planning for this celebration. Well, is there something we can learn from this wedding about living and having a healthy life of faith? Mary, the mother of Jesus, sees there is a problem. She notices there's a problem. And she goes to Jesus and says, they have no more wine. You know, I, I have, I can't say, I don't really believe she is expecting him to do a miracle. But over the years since uh, Joseph's death, I believe that Mary had to go to Jesus, who was the oldest son, and ask him for his help through the years. 
He was a man of the family since that time. And Jesus responds, why do you involve me? Did you ever say that? Why do you want me to get involved in this? But Mary believes Jesus can help and he tells the servants to do whatever he tells them to do. Now the servants were there to serve their master and we don't even know if they really knew Jesus or knew much about him. But that's what Mary tells them to do. And think about this picture. There are empty stone jars waiting to be filled. Don't miss that. Because I believe those empty stone jars are symbolic of us waiting to be filled with the love of our God. With God's love. We're empty. Waiting to be filled with the goodness of God. And this God moment happens because, listen, Jesus has been invited to the wedding. Jesus had been invited to this moment of time in this wedding. An invitation to a joyous and happy time. And Jesus had accepted the invitation along with his disciples. And this happy occasion was about to go south. But the presence of Jesus, do you hear that? The presence of Jesus. Jesus being invited to this wedding would change the outcome and it would be a nurturing moment for those disciples. Remember what it said about them? They began to believe in Jesus from what they saw. Think about this. What if Jesus had not been invited to this wedding? What if Jesus had not been invited to this wedding? I'm reminded, uh, I heard this story a long time ago, and I've never forgotten about an eight-year-old boy from West Virginia. How many of you remember Johnny Carson? Some of you at my age will remember Johnny Carson's show. Came on late at night, and this eight-year-old boy from West Virginia had saved some of his friends. They got trapped in a mine, and he saved them. And Johnny Carson invited him to be on his show. And it became obvious this little boy is a Christian because he said, I'm a Christian. I go to Sunday school every week. And Johnny asked him, well, what are you learning in Sunday school? The little boy said, well, last week we learned about Jesus. He was invited to a wedding and he transformed the water into wine. Can you imagine the laughter that went through that place at that time? Water being turned into wine? Johnny was laughing, trying to hold back his laugh so the little boy wouldn't see, but everybody in the audience was laughing. And Johnny, trying to keep his composure, he finally says to him, well, what did you learn from that? And the little boy squirmed. Can you imagine being in that position, all those people watching and laughing? The TV cameras are on you. He squirmed a little and there was silence. Then the little boy says, if you're going to have a wedding, make sure you invite Jesus. <laughs> if you're going to have a wedding, Make sure you invite Jesus. You know, I believe that little boy's on to something. Have you invited Jesus into your life? Faith is thirsting for the presence of God. Faith is inviting and expecting Jesus to be part of your life. 
Faith is constantly asking and listening for the guidance of the Holy Spirit in your life. Think about this. If you were one of the servants, put yourself in their sandals once. If you were one of their servants that were there that day, would you have obeyed and carried the water when you know, had, had no clue to what was happening? Now before you answer, don't answer too quickly. They were going to have to carry a lot of water. They couldn't just go get the water hose and turn the spigot on and fill those jars up to the brim. They were going to have to carry that water to fill those pots. And they said those pots held 120 and 160 gallons. You realize that's about 960 pounds of water? That's almost a half a ton. Think about that. They were going to have to carry all that water to fill those pots up. Would you have carried that water? Would you have obeyed? Would you, like the servant, have stepped forth in faith to carry the water to the master of the banquet? Think about that. Carries that water to the master of the banquet to drink, knowing that he's expecting wine, and you know that it's water? They did. You see, a living faith is participating in what God is doing. A living faith is believing God takes a little and increases it in great ways. Stepping out when we don't know what's about to happen. A living faith is trusting God when the situation is out of your control. A living faith is knowing that with Jesus the best is still to come. The big question for us all, individually as a church family, is are you ready? Are we ready? Are we ready to step forth in faith and pursue righteousness and to follow God? That means, guess who's in control? God. 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter, verses 11 to 12 says, great words for us. Pursue righteousness and a godly life and along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness, fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you. And on this Sunday where we have observed All Saints Day, I think of those that we remember that we've still grieve their loss and mourn. They're up there cheering us on, wanting us to pursue the righteousness of God and live a life of faith so that yes, one day we'll join them again in that great celebration. But at the same time, I believe they're cheering us on so that we share with others our faith in Jesus Christ so that more people will come to know Christ as their Savior. To be like those servants and carry that water. Not knowing what was going to happen but to only discover what only God could do when we trust him and obey and live by faith. Are you ready? Are we ready? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this 
wonderful day. A day that we can celebrate the men and women of faith who we miss, but also we can be encouraged to live by faith. Help us, God, to have an active faith. One that shines and one that shares the goodness of you in all that we do. And God, I pray that we individually, each one that is here, each one that is listening, that we might uh, just so trust you that we step out. Step out in faith with you and live and pursue the righteous life so that this world will know that we have a Heavenly Father, our God, who knows the way, who can bring peace in the midst of hurt and pain. A Heavenly Father who can bring joy when we're filled with sorrow. A Heavenly Father who forgives us when we're broken and going the wrong direction. So God, here we are. We're your children. Help us to have a faith. And like that eight-year-old boy, may we learn to not only at weddings, but each day of our life to invite you, Jesus, to be with us. In his name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you, if you're able, to stand and Seth and Jess.
your blood you died upon the cross you are my jesus who loves me you are beautiful my sweet sweet song you are beautiful my sweet sweet song you are beautiful my sweet sweet song and i will sing God loves you. Isn't that wonderful? Before I forget, I want to invite all those who have had spouses in the past two years to, that lost a loved one to come up and get a rose after the service and take home in their memory, if you would, please. And I also believe somebody has a birthday today. I'd like them to come up and get a rose also to take home. But what might God do if you step forward in faith and let God come alive in you. He did a simple thing like turning water into wine. But what might he do in this world through you? What might he do through this community that you live through you if you allow your faith to come alive? So go forth, know that you are loved, and go forth in love and go with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all God's children shouted, amen and amen. Go in peace.